Hi, this is Maximilian Giel. I'm the founder of the 21 in 21 project. And this episode, I just wanted to talk about like the most scariest moment I actually had on this journey uh, over the 4,000 meter peaks of Switzerland uh, in the year 20 and 21. And so, yeah, I thought like maybe it's a little bit interesting where maybe I found it really scary um, and where maybe you thought it's scary and um, I didn't so do so. So um, yeah, I think let's start things off and I wish you a lot of fun with this video. And yeah, so let's start. So my first moment where I think it was scary was straight away the first two, um, actually on the, on the Fischer Hörner. And there was like kind of this problem. Um, usually, uh, if there's not this kind of virus, um, you will be um, at the Jungfrau Joch um, way earlier, like around nine o'clock in the morning. And as it was like kind of Corona times, um, we yeah just got a train, which got up there at ten twenty. Um, so it's uh, one and a half hours later than usual. So this already was kind of, yeah, and meaning that it would be probably a long day. The thing is, when we, when we got up there <clears throat> and we climbed the, the, the gross fischer horn, and then we, we eventually had to, to upsail down there and it was really gusty. So we had like 50k of wind and so, yeah, it was really, still really early winter. Um, the good thing is it was pretty cold, so we didn't have any problems with the temperature and being on the glacier late of the day. But um, yeah, already making the track over there um, was really, really, um, yeah, it was exhausting and it, it just required a lot of, of willing to really um, get there and get to the summit. But uh, this wasn't actually like the, the hardest part because the hardest part and the thing what I was really scared of was to uh, to go down on the glacier um, where there wasn't any tracks and we have like 50k of wind. We are a team of two <laughs> and I just have a track on my Zoom to watch um, from one week before which helped definitely. Um, but anyway, if you're on a glacier with 40 centimeters of fresh powder, um, you don't really see the, the crevasses, and there are big crevasses, and you have to make the track. This is really a scary situation, and um, probably if I would watch on my on my um, on my heart rate on my watch of this move, I would see that it was pretty pretty high. And so we, we got down there roped and yeah, it was, it, things went pretty good, but there was this small kind of, of snow bridge where the track pointed to go over this and you just stand there and think like, Phew, this, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I definitely don't want to do that. But um, eventually, um, yeah, everything went well. And afterwards, um, yeah, things got a little bit easier. But yeah, this is what like was my first really scary situations on this this project. Next up um, of the scary moments of this project number two is um, the Alechorn, and it's not the, about the climb of the Alechorn because we did it in a single push. Um, we had quite to hurry and uh, the problem was not climbing the summit, the problem was the way back. And I, I knew this when I, when I planned the tour because um, you have to climb up again to Blatten and climbing up there it's a pretty steep slope and it's fully east exposed so the sun will hit it really really hard. So as we went there in I think April, um, days got warm, <laughs> definitely got warm and yeah I, I had to break the trail in like kind of water skiing style and the last thing is like in small kind of cool water in summertime there are some some ropes in there and so i climbed up there and when i when i actually looked back i saw as, as timo was 
hit by an, like a huge snowball and uh, nothing happened so he just like could could smash it away uh, and got up there um, but it was really a moment where you think like never mess up with nature so yeah keep that in mind um, just like uh, when you when you do tours keep the, the exposition of the of the slopes in mind and also check your time Next up, we have uh, scary moment number three. Um, this is uh, the Dordero. Um, the Dordero was in many ways kind of difficult. You know, when we did the tour, um, there was lockdown in Aosta, so they weren't allowed to go outside. Um, and as a consequence of this, I didn't have any information about the conditions on the mountain. Um, I also didn't expect that the hut would be open. In the end it was open so um, to get there we couldn't drive to Italy <laughs> obviously <laughs> so we we crossed the border with skis um, <clears throat> and then uh, on the next day we started really early and just like things were pretty okay um, there were some big crevasses um, but but everything was fine. There was a track um, to to the slope to the southwest uh, slope where we where we usually go up um, for the for the final summit push. Uh, so everything went pretty well there. But uh, when we when we moved up there, um, just like the last part is pretty pretty steep and it's supposed to be full of snow usually. Um, but uh, there was pretty less snow. And, and the consistency of the snow was, was not really good. You know, there was like a big uh, layer of, of crusted um, windblown snow. And under this, there was the good snow where the, where the ice axe would, would really have a good hold. But um, first you had to get rid of this, this, uh, this thick layer of snow. And uh, the last like 20, 30, yeah, probably, yeah, 20 meters, uh, there were like, such a thin layer and just below this there was bare ice and as we had just one rope um, and Damian was with his girlfriend um, I just like um, didn't want to wait for them and so I just soloed it and just went up there and just like five meters below the, the topping out <laughs> there was just like an, an, an uh, piece of rock um, I was it was really slabby um, so you had really, you had like this small kind of, of thing where you could put your crampon on and yeah, I, I just like knew like in this moment, I just knew like in this moment, um, you better don't mess up now. <laughs> and so things went, went well, I just like had the, the possibility to, to get the ice axe um, stick and, and it was really good. And after this, it was it was done. But it was really, really a scary moment. And um, yeah, there could be um, some 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 problems. And if you slip there, you're probably gonna die. So yeah, um, yeah, that was like uh, that. That's that's the problem with this kind of project. When you have this kind of ambitious goal, uh, you will need to to take sometimes more risk than you probably would if you wouldn't have this kind of project because if you wouldn't have this kind of project you just would wait till the conditions would be good or maybe go one year later but in this situation i knew like i i wanted to take off this the summit and i thought like the conditions would be good um but yeah things can be different on the south side on the alps um compared to the to the north side of the alps and this summit you approach from the south side and that's that's what you what you see in this kind of situation yeah but as you see i'm still sitting here everything went well um but yeah definitely a scary moment <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about a situation um that happened not to us but uh, to another rope party and this is number four. Um, we did the, the Bright Hunt Traverse in July. Uh, it was pretty wintry. And yeah, the Bright Hunt Traverse is pretty, pretty well known. And so it's also pretty crowded. And so we were pretty good in time. We ran over there to, to the Biwak and just went up to the Rochanera. 
and then we just like went up to the to the next summit uh, eastern brighthorn twin and we had to wait like one hour there to to do the upsail um, and there was like an, an italian rope team before us just in front of us not before us in front of us um and they you know it's if you read the guidebook they're standing you need 40 meter of rope that, that's it that's the way it is you need 40 meters but they brought 30 meters for whatever reason so what they did they did kind of some weird ro uh, knot on the top and just like upsell down on the single single strain of rope um, on the first upsell and just um, the party in front of us just like released the knot and then they just could go um, so after tons of time, we finally could upsell down there and went to the, to the second summit, um, to the Western um, Brighthorn Twin or the Gendarme called on the map. And there's another upsell, um, so you basically have to upsell um, either two times or one time if you have two, two 40 meter ropes. We paired up with another team of, ro uh, of uh, uh, with another rope team. And so when the first uh, of us just upsailed down there, um, he was just like, hey, what's, what's going on with the rope? And she, she just looked down and he saw like the last guy of the Italian rope team, which was head down, laying down there uh, and just fixated while he was um, just like nodded with his cramping in our rope. So if he probably would haven't just like get stuck in our rope, he probably would have just slid down and, and fall to his death. That's, that's the most um, probable um, thing what would have happened. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, you just stand up there, you don't see it and, and just like five meters below you, someone falls nearly to his death. It's, yeah, that's, that's basically what I, experience on this on this kind of spaghetti tours it's really crowded and um, I don't want to offend someone but you know as far as I can just like um, talk about it and what I've seen there are a lot of people which aren't really really experienced and so this is this is high risk what these guys are doing there so yeah this is my scary moment number four <laughs> Let's talk about the scary moment number five, the infamous Liscam. Um, you know, uh, it's it's pretty. Um, it's it's uh, if you read old books, uh, it's called the Man Eater um, because there there have been some accidents on this mountain, on this traverse because it's uh, depending on the conditions. It's it's really exposed and it's it's really uh, yeah it's this thin line where you walk on. Um, for me personally, there was just like actually one moment where it was really really sketchy. Um, that's why I don't have it on video. And uh, that's that's like the the basic thing. What you know, if things get really really tough, you probably won't film. <laughs> And it's just like there's a small part of rock uh, on this whole traverse. It's maybe 400, 500 meters uh, where you have to climb a little bit on rock or traverse on the right. It's, it's never hard climbing, but um, it's really, really thaw small. It's, it's a really, really narrow kind of path where you walk on. And so you start from the, from the western summit and then it gets, gets narrow, narrow, narrow. And just like you get to this point where you stand on this small kind of thing where you, where you actually like have to walk on or maybe like this. And then you, uh, you come to a rock like, like a mushroom which is standing there and you have to go around it. So that's, that's the problem. So I got there and when I got there I, you need to, need to go a little bit down there. Um, I just heard like ding, ding, ding. And I just looked, and I just like um, the the sun cover of my uh, of my lens just like went down the south face of the Liscam, and there was just like the moment. So okay, that's not possible to to climb here with the with the camera hang around. So I just like stood on this small kind of piece of rock and snow, and just like laid my backpack down there and just like 
put my camera carefully in there, just like close a little bit my, my backpack. And then you just like go around this rock, you, you grab it like this. But the problem is you stand on this kind of narrow ridge and you stand there backwards and you need to turn. And yeah, it's, it's really scary because you have to grab the rock behind you and then you just like carefully, carefully, slowly turn around and after this things get easier. It's, it's still narrow, but it's, it's way easier to go. But this was, was really a an, an, an scary moment, uh, which uh, definitely um, led to the, to the fact that my heart rate went a little bit higher. <laughs> so um, but the rest of the list come was, was pretty good. Um, just like as one tip, um, just know that when you reach the, western, uh, the eastern summit, which is the highest point on 4,545 meters, something like that, don't think it's over. It's a long way down to the Lisioch and it's still narrow and it's it, it requires concentration. So just like know that when you do that tour. So that's my scary moment. Number five. Let's talk about uh, another um, scary moment and uh, it's again a ski peak. I forgot that before. Um, and this was the Pitz Bernina. Um, we did it as a single push from, from the Diavoletza, uh, not from the Diavoletza, from Mortaraj. And it's just like um, I knew that there was a Czech rope party, I think, like two or three days before, and they just like didn't climb the, the normal route, um, the Spaller Ridge. They, they just like traversed the Spaller Ridge on the right hand side. Um, and like just like climbed the flank and I just Alex told me that and he said like hey this will be much faster and it will be fun <laughs> for him and so let's do that and um, I said like, okay I bring two ice axes in this case and it was just like um, it was like really really steep like 50 plus degrees and there wasn't too much snow in it so it was like like this, where the, the crampets may be like this, what you saw because Alex just went in front, uh, as you have seen if you watch the video. And just like, you saw like this kind of, maybe just like the, the front pins of his crampons. Um, you saw where he walked. And it's just like, it's not a, a big deal. It's, it's In the end, it's not, not hard, but it's just like if you look down and you see like if you fall down there, you probably fall to it as because you will slide down 200 meters. It's more a mental thing. And it was really, really scary. I just like that to my don't look down, just look up, that's where you want to go. And just duck, duck, duck. But it's just like, um, yeah, I show you um, also the, the video footage here. Um, you maybe know what I mean. And we, we were unroped, it wouldn't have made any sense because there was no, no really proper placement for ice crew. Um, but yeah, so in this moment, you're just like on your own and you have just your tools and don't think, just do it. But definitely, definitely a scary moment of this project. <laughs> So um, next up, uh, this is maybe like a scariest moment, 0.6.5 on the same tour on the Pits Bernina. Um, we, we, we just like skied down and yeah, it was not too much snow. It was all the snow was blown away. It was really bumpy to ski down there. <laughs> and as you see in the video, like Alex lost his ski. He just like probably, that's what I'm guessing, uh, just like kicked his ski, uh, unfortunately, in a, in a kind of a crevasse and just the ski went away and he didn't have any stoppers and it was just like, we just looked down there and I skied down there carefully but um, it stopped in the end like three or four meters in front of a huge crevasse and so we were really, really lucky because otherwise this would have been a long descent. With one ski through this really massive crevasse jungle yeah we were really lucky to to get this ski so yeah <laughs> tough moment so next up we have um, scary moment number seven and this is uh, is the Weisshorn uh, where you have 
basically two scary things or three. Um, first up, it was like um, it was a, a day where I not felt too comfortable. I just like felt it in my gut that I need, need to be careful. And when we reached the the, the East Ridge, um, yeah, it was it was good conditions, but not perfect conditions. So there was still a lot of snow, and it's. I think it's it's one of the exposed most exposed ridges I've ever done. It's it's really you feel the, the exposure in every step um, because you have to walk a lot of on these small things. That's why I, I rode it at, at times, um, as you see in the video here. And yeah, I was like um, we were roped in this situation, and it was like yeah, I didn't feel really well on this day. Uh, things went really good, but um, yeah, and then we, we came to the to the final summit approach um, And there was a hell of a lot of snow when you look at the photos Usually there's like you see the rock and they say like just like climb the rock on the left side um, Don't go on the right side because it's it's really um, Brittle rock and there will be rock fall. So uh, just like go, go this way and so we had to traverse on this kind of brittle rock and uh, even though we were roped it was really scary because even if you're on a rope and you you fall you will just like do an, a big pendula and you don't want to do that and so i was, I was really happy when we uh, basically went off down and we we had made this this kind of situation also the way down was was really sketchy the, the snow wasn't really like perfect it was like kind of watery um, below so you had really to be careful that you don't slip because if you slip you make a slip and slide down the north face and so then we finally reached the breakfast place and then we went down and there were two other rope teams which didn't make it to the summit uh, didn't make it to the summit and we passed them already before the breakfast place and so we went down, everything went well, and then there's one last upsell um, where, where it's standing in the guidebook, there's, there's potentially rockfall. So I upsell down first and just it looked like where can I stand um, to, to put my crampons on because you need to traverse a steep snowfield afterwards um, and be, be aware of the rockfall. And I thought like, okay, this, this will be a good thing. And I just like put my first crampon on and I just like laid down my second crampon and the moment when I just laid it down I heard like this shh, and I just like went like this and a rock like maybe just like like this but it just like went 20 centimeters in front of my head and it was just like this was was luck because uh, even though I had a helmet on my head potential is high that I, I would have severe um, injury or or be that just because of the small piece of rock so yeah we just like looked that we get the f out of it you know like really ran out of it um, uh, so this was definitely a scary moment and and it shows you I mean that you go down a south face so this is anyway a big problem I, I think that another rope party from from on top just released this rock there's not no intention to do that it's just like bad luck but anyway be aware of rockfall in the mountains then we have next up um, we have the north end um, which is kind of a tricky summit um, because all the people usually just go for the Dufur Dufur Spitz and less people are going to the, to the north end which leads to the fact that you usually have to break the trail um, we were um, four people who broke the trail, which was, was pretty nice. Um, but even though it's, it's actually not really steep, but it feels really, really exposed, um, especially in the last part, um, where you have to traverse with two ice axes or yeah, with one ice axe um, to the left. And so um, I, I really felt not comfortable. Um, when we when we went up there and it was also a really scary moment uh, for me there was never a slip or whatever but it was just like an, a moment where I thought like oh. okay same as Pitts Benina just don't look down just look up and just push on 
Then we have uh, two more uh, kind of scary moments. Um, so first, um, I shortly want to talk about the, the Shrekhorn. Um, the Shrekhorn, um, you can read it. It's, it's, uh, it's sad that it's the, the most difficult uh, normal route on a 4000 meter peaks in, in the Alps um, or in, in Switzerland of the Swiss 4000 meter peaks. Um, I think you, uh, I think I can agree to this in, in kind of terms. Um, and there's just like one, I mean, the upper part is pretty solid rock and it's nice climbing for sure. It's exposed, but it's nice. There are bolts and, and everything is fine. But the, the problem is kind of the, the lower, um, part of the, of the climb. So we, we were there pretty early. We climbed it in the dark. So first you have like this really slabby kind of thing. Um, which which works out pretty well with with, uh, with mountain boots, um, but then you have a really yeah and sketchy traverse uh, where you have to climb down a little bit to get to the next bolt. Um, this is really really sketchy and it's also not really solid rock at times. And if you just like release a rock, it will fall down actually exactly to the start of the route. So be aware of that. Um, this was already really scary and. Just like on the way down, um, on the way up, no, nothing really special happened. But on the way down, you have up above this part, you have um, um, a situation uh, where you have like slabby kind of rock, um, but you ha don't have any bolts. And this doesn't make sense because you have bolts on the top, but in the middle part where it's potentially a high risk if you slip and yeah, you will probably die. Um, there aren't any bolts, you have just like old kind of ropes and whatever. Um, so yeah, this was, was really scary to, to down climb this. Um, even though we had some upsells, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, be aware of that. <laughs> so, uh, and last but not least, we have the Lenspitz North East Face, where I was really kind of excited about it. Um, I was for sure, I was thinking, can I do it or do I not can do it? Um, but um, yeah, it was just like what I realized, we had really good conditions in the face. Um, and as long as I just looked up and followed Tobias' footsteps, everything was pretty fine. But I tried one time to to shoot, and I really I got immediately got kind of vertical. I felt dizzy um, because of the dark, and you don't see anything. And so in the end, I just like didn't take too many pictures um, because uh, yeah, I just like shot them blind like this. And it was really a relief. So it was not a super scary situation. We had just long one patch of bare ice, but um, yeah, the whole phase was was an exciting moment. Um, as long as I looked up, it wasn't too scary, but it still was um, was a was a tour where I really thought like, okay, be careful, don't mess up. Um, yeah, I think. That's it um, with with my my most scariest moments of the of the project 21 in 21. Um, I hope this this help you a little bit to to if you are up for the, kind of these tours to to think about and get some inputs. And uh, I also want to tell you that because like I'm just a human. I'm not a pro alpinist. I'm I'm ambitious, but you know there are a lot of people which are way better than me. Um, but uh, the whole project was more like meant to to show that if you have a goal and you really really want it so you will be able to achieve it and, and that's what i want to motivate people to just look for a goal and then you if you just like really want it from your heart you have a high possibility to um to actually reach this goal and yeah i hope you you like the video if you want to see more content about me and climbing photography and whatever just subscribe to this channel um, i will post regularly at times if i have an interesting topic um, it's for free basically and yeah thanks a lot for watching um, if you have any questions or whatever just leave a comment down below 
Um, I'm really looking forward to your feedback. And now I just wish you a wonderful day out of my home office. See you soon, somewhere outside. Cheers. Son of the ledge bit, number 21 of 21. Thanks to Venus. Wow, what a moment. At sunrise at the top. The mood is just crazy. So yeah, just enjoy. Right.